Hey guys, David Franklin here with Cartersville Uncut with Dr. Mark Fearbach, the superintendent for Cartersville City School. And Mark, you just started school, man. So give us the word. Was it a good start? It has been a great start. We started a week ago Wednesday, so we're in our last full week of uh, the start of the school year. And teachers, a lot of times, I will say too, there's no tired like the first full week uh, of the school year. Uh, just, I've heard there's some kind of 10 day thing. Oh the yeah. The first 10 days are just. For sure. You're just, you're, you're, you're going full speed. So, you know, last week we were in for three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but this is our first five day week, but it's been great. Um, this is my fifth year as superintendent and, and you know, I'd say that's been probably the greatest start of school that we've had. Just excitement's there. Um, you know, kids are, are, are happy to be there. I mean, as happy as can be with school. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't think everybody just loves waking up in the morning um, to go to school, per se, but they're, they're loving it. Um, you know, a lot of excitement. I've been in schools several days each week and uh, lots of smiles, lots of high fives, uh, lots of good energy going on right now. And listen, that, that is so important with these kids, especially, you know, I read articles every week about just kids and the whole thing with COVID and being isolated and all that kind of stuff, for them to be able to come back to some kind of routine from an emotional health standpoint, that's huge, isn't it? It is, I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, you know, why do you, why do you think um, there's so much excitement uh, this year? Why, why, are, why is that happening? And, and I said, well, number one, I, I, I think part of that reason is we're another year outside of the craziness that we had lived for a few years. And it, it, it takes time, I've always said, I've, and you know, people believe that uh, however long we lived through that craziness, it's gonna take us just as much, if not double that time to come out of it. And so I think that's uh, in part uh, the play. I, I think too, as a district, uh, we know who we are, we know where we're going, um, and we're very clear about that. And it's just, uh, you know, People are authentically excited about it, and it's just a, a good place to, to start the year. And being in a routine, um, you know, is, is is good for everybody, in my opinion. Yeah, listen, all people, not just kids, all of us need. That's routines. why I'm saying I, I do too. I do too. We we all do better with some kind of That's some right. kind of routines. That's right. So listen, as you start the, the school year, focuses things that you know, if some grandmother's watching this or some parents watching this. What you know who you are, what do you want kids to just just uh, experience and just some goals that Carswell City School System has? Yeah, no, it's a great question. You know, we had a great year last year. If you look at the, the end of the year, if we're just going to talk about tests, uh, you know, we saw double digit increase in, in many areas across the board. We saw a lot of growth uh, in our proficient, distinguished learners, and all that's great, um, but it's more than just that. And, you know, a few years ago, uh, we really rolled out what we refer to as true accountability, our strategic direction, which is based upon seven pillars that, that ranges from student achievement and student readiness all the way down to safety and well-being and fiscal operations. And, you know, under those seven pillars, there's about 28 elements that, that we are keeping ourselves or holding ourselves accountable for that, that are important to this community, uh, you know, in educating children. And so... Our hope is that we continue to address uh, the good and the bad in those elements. We're very honest. If you go online and you look at our signaling charts, we're telling you the areas that we feel that we're very strong in. We're telling you the areas that we, we need to work in. Um, and so as a system, we continue to you know, look at those um, and grow in those areas. Again, anything from the safety of, of our schools to the cleanliness of our schools to you know, how kids are, are growing and, and learning throughout the year. At the end of the day, we want kids to come, we want to feel excited, we want to feel loved, we want to feel supported, and we want them to grow uh, just as, as a whole child, academically, emotionally, socially. Um, and that's the, the culture that, that, that we've, you know, have tried to create and that we'll continue to foster. You know, Mark, I, I'm really uh, living in Bartow County as I travel around the state. I hear a lot of good comments from business people, education people, always like, Man, y'all, y'all got some good things going on in in the city and the county. I mean, it's just it's just really good and really appreciate your work. One thing you mentioned is that accountability and and being honest about measuring. Uh, so many places I've seen kind of coast and are okay just to do what we did last year, but you're not like that. And you know, you know, we we appreciate that because that idea of trying to get better. How do you make that throughout the school? I mean, how do you 
instill that in people? Yeah, I think it's just, you know, what are we focused on? And, and that's where, you know, last year we rolled out, you know, after about two years, two and a half years of conversations and listening to stakeholders, you know, we rolled out our, our mission, vision, and values, and, and, you know, really focus on building legacies one student at a time, you know, because you know, a lot of times we hear, well, this person left this legacy. I and mean, you hear that a lot maybe when somebody passes away. This was yep. their legacy. Um, and that's, that's great. In our world, when we're dealing with a younger generation, with younger students, we don't know what their legacy is yet. But we, we may not know, but we're helping build that. And the, the, that focus and that commitment to, you know, every day serving our students, serving their families, serving this community, because we are helping shape and mold whatever legacy this child is, is, is going to grow up to, to leave. And so, um, you know, just not resting, not settling. Not always, resting. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's a great way to say it. it it's, it's always, how can we be better? And I tell everyone all the time, we're not perfect. We're never going to be perfect. Um, but how are we striving to be a little bit better each day? And, you know, I expect that from myself. We expect that from our, our, our teachers and we expect it from our students. Everyone's at a different place in life. And, you know, you might be 10 times better at math than I am. And that's okay. But did I grow a little bit that, that next day? And you may have grown too. We want everybody to grow. And so just keeping that constant, continuous improvement mindset, um, that's what we tell people with our seven pillars. A lot of times uh, strategic plans or school improvement is focused on, you know, from August to May. And we're saying, no, continuous improvement at Carswell City Schools is a 12-month process. Even through the summer months, we are looking at how are we growing, where are we going, and we're constantly looking at this. You know, a lot of times people, you know, get caught up in five-year plans and all that. It's just very hard to predict what's going to happen five years from now. And so we have, this is our direction, and we are focused on it daily, monthly, yearly, making adjustments along the way. And, and I feel like that is the, the, the message that we've promoted, the culture the, of who we are, and uh, we've bought into it, and that's just that's how we operate day in and day out. Listen, let me, let me chase a rabbit. Guys, what you just heard him say, if you'll put that into practice, I don't care what age you are, but to grow each day, life will be better. Won't it? Right. I, mean, I mean, listen, if everybody had that mindset, I'm not rest, but to always just grow. Listen, uh, when we come back, I want to ask you, a lot of growth, Carsville High School looks like a college campus. I'm going to ask you about that. I want to ask you about school safety. I want to ask you about the growth in Cartersville and all that kind of stuff. So when we come right back, i got a whole bunch of stuff to, uh, to ask that everybody keeps asking me about. So, so we'll be right back. I'm Glenda Mitchell with Glenda Mitchell Law Firm. If you've been involved in an accident, give me a call. Let me help you. I give every client my personal cell phone number so you can call or text me anytime. Glenda Mitchell Law Firm, we come to you. Hey, it's Chris Nichols from Cartersville Cell Phone Repair. Whether you need your phone fixed or it's time for an upgrade, we've got you covered. We sell and repair phones, tablets, laptops, smartwatches, and even gaming consoles. We also have a huge selection of phone cases for newer and older models. Need accessories like chargers or car mounts? Or how about a Bluetooth shower speaker? Forget your passcode, we can get past that for you. Or if you want to ditch your current network carrier, come see us for unlocks. We're behind Lowe's next to Pizza in Cartersville. Hey everybody, it's Kelly Jones here at Kennesaw Transportation. Um, just want to drop in and let you know that we're always looking for drivers. We run team drivers and solos, and then we also have a small training program. Um, we'd love to have you join us. Great company, benefits, pay. I just can't say enough great things. So call me. Our website is listed below. Thanks. Welcome to Treasure Chest. Hey, why don't you come on in? Let me show you around and tell you what we're about. Football season has started. Come on in, check out our selection of recliners so you can kick back and enjoy that big game. We have a large selection of tables. We've got rustic. We've got cabbing, we've got just casual dining. We have a lot to choose from. Hey, if you need a small sectional for your living room, or if you need a large sectional for your living room, or anything in between of Sofa Loves, we've got a selection for you. Here at Treasure Chest Outlet, we have good used furniture that we get by consignment. We have a good selection of new stuff. Why don't you come on by and see us because you just never know what you're going to find here at Treasure Chest Outlet. Hey guys, David Franklin with Cartersville Uncut, back with Dr. Mark Feuerbach, the superintendent of Cartersville City School. And uh, Mark, you did a, just a great job of articulating something we all ought to be doing, which is 
really striving to be better. But I want to get down to some nuts and bolts because, yeah. you know, I get asked a lot of questions. Have you seen Cardinal High School? That looks like a college campus. So all the growth, man, what are y'all building? And talk about that. Yeah, so we are, are currently in, in phase two. Phase one, we, we redid our, our front entrance of the high school and we expanded our cafeteria. And so, you know, a lot of people don't know is we were operating at uh, about 120, 125% capacity for many years. And so- um, That's hard to do. Yeah, it is hard to do. It wasn't, it wasn't easy. And so we, we are now expanding. And a lot of times people say, it's so big, you know, that you have that many students. Well, it's not that we've, you know, over the years, we've brought in more students, but now it's time to give us adequate space to serve the students that, that, that we have. And so you know, we're about 1,400 students, 1,425, 1,435, um, and we're, we're growing to build that, you know, right now the capacity will be up to 2,000. So there's gonna be plenty of space. But we're building uh, about a hundred thousand square foot STEM building. Um, that is the massive building that you see. No, wait, wait, wait. Most of y'all don't know what STEM is. Yeah, so, so science, technology, engineering, and math. Yeah. And so that is what the most part is going to be housed there. Now that building is being built where our old gym was, a secondary gym. And high schools need to have at least two gyms running. So. We're building back a, a, a secondary gym, um, but it's going to be, you're going to be able to use it for like JV sports and competition where the other one was so outdated we couldn't do that. So we're building that back because right now we've only had one. Um, and on the first floor, we're also going to have our ROTC uh, facilities. So we started ROTC several years ago. We now have over 100 kids in the program. Uh, it's, it's awesome. And so in there, we'll have two classrooms, our ROTC instructor offices. Uh, two locker rooms, you know, for boys and girls, as well as our indoor rifle range. And so we're very excited about that. And can, I, can I go back to high school? Yeah, yeah, hey, listen, come on. I, I actually shot on a, actually uh, was on our high school rifle Okay, team. well we will have that on the first floor and then we also have a new state-of-the-art engineering lab on the first floor. Second floor will be math classrooms um, and a computer science uh, lab. And then our third floor will be all new state-of-the-art uh, science labs. Mark, one of the things that uh, this whole thing of STEM, of science, technology, engineering, and math, yep. did I get it right? Yep. Yeah. A lot of that is being driven by the, the, uh, the whole business world of what kind of workers they need, isn't it? It, it is. And, you know, not to get off track, but we're really excited about what we're right now looking at. It's probably going to be a three to four year process, and we're rolling out this year. But a STEAM initiative. We're going to, we're putting the A in there for arts, um, and uh, you know our our goal is three to four years from now, um, our entire system, all four schools will will be STEAM certified. Uh, two years ago, so we're going into year three of we have we offer computer science at our middle school, and um, this I think will be the first year where we'll actually have kids who can earn a computer science high school credit um, if they do the whole program through middle school. Uh, high school we rolled out computer science last year. And this year, this current school year, just a week, you know, weekend, we now are, are teaching computer science K through five as well. And wow. so we have in our system, computer science, K-12, six through eight and, and nine through 12, it's an elective, but K to five, all of our students, that is one, just like they go to PE, they go to art, they go to music, they will now be going to a STEM computer science classroom. Uh, Friday, actually the state superintendent visited us, our system on Friday, we visited all of our schools and we went into a fourth grade classroom and those kids were already coding. Uh, so we're excited about it. We're excited about rolling that out. But that's the world we live in. That it is the world we live in. And good for y'all for saying, hey, let's, let's, let's equip our students for the world they live in. And that's the thing, it's not, we're not, you know, gonna necessarily mandate, like again, middle and high becomes an elective, but it is the world we live in and we need to begin to expose our children to these opportunities and, and, and help them become, uh, have the ability to be able to, even at a basic level, to be able to understand that world, live in that world. Um, and, and there's computer science, people sometimes just think computer, there's a lots of computer science, so many opportunities. So. We're excited about uh, this new uh, rollout that we've done and, and looking forward to great things. All right, real quick, growth in Cartersville, a lot of building all over the county, every place. Are y'all seeing an increase in enrollment? Our enrollment's about the same right now. We were seeing pre-COVID, it was, it was coming, and it was coming faster than we, had, we were anticipating. COVID has slowed it down. Um, enrollment went down just a little bit. Uh, we saw at the end of last year, it kind of leveled off. 
My prediction is this year um, we're leveling and we're going to begin to start seeing a slow, steady increase. And we're already kind of seeing that here at the start of the school yeah. year. Yeah, everything I've seen says we're going to start going up. Yes, sir. Listen, I'm going to come back. I want to ask you about school safety because that is a huge thing that everybody's thinking about. So we'll be right back. SOS Mattress, best quality, best price, guaranteed. Where can you find a huge selection of high-end mattresses without paying high-end prices? SOS Mattress, best quality, best price, guaranteed. Where can you save 50 to 80% off retail every day? SOS Mattress, best quality, best price, guaranteed. We offer the lowest prices on the best name brand mattresses. SOS Mattress and Clearance Center on Highway 41 in Cartersville, one block south of Home Depot. I'm um, Jesse Weaver with Weaver Heating and Air. Uh, I am a second generation owner coming in. Uh, my dad started the business in July of 1973 and we're about to celebrate year 49 uh, coming up. So we're really excited about that. Um, our, our business has been based on family, uh, not only for ourselves, but for our employees and also the customers that we serve. Uh, it's very important for us to not only provide heating and air, but we also like to be a part of the community uh, physically and monetarily to, to help out in any needs that we can. Hey, this is Joe Wilson, co-owner of Parnick Jennings Funeral Home, Cartersville's locally owned funeral home, serving all of Bartow County since 1977. The biggest difference uh, of, of our funeral home here in Bartow County, Cartersville, is that we are a locally owned funeral home. Uh, we make all our decisions right here in the funeral home. When people walk in the door, they're going to meet the owner and know that we're making decisions on what's best for the families that have placed their trust and confidence in us and the needs of our community. We want you to know it would be our honor to serve your family during your time of need. Please call us at 770-382-0034. Hey guys, David Franklin with Cardsville Love Coat, back with uh, Dr. Mark Fierbach, the superintendent of Cardsville City Schools, who's doing a great job. So Mark, school safety, I hear it every place I go because I'm dealing with churches and we are always having to think about it. So talk about it because, man, that's on all of everybody's mind. Yeah, no, it is. And it should be in everybody's mind. Um, you know, things you see around us today, you know, I understand why people are concerned, but I'm, I'm confident in our, our school safety plans. Um, that are reviewed, you know, all the time, that are gone over with our administrators, our teachers, they know what to do in the case of an emergency. Uh, you know, we have our schools now, you, have, you can't get in unless you go through the, the front corridor. You kind of have to be checked in there first to get through. So I feel like, you know, we've secured it. The high school was, was the one high school where it had a lot of open buildings, um, but through all the construction you're seeing, um, we've now actually built um, connector hallways. And so uh, by the end of phase two, all of our buildings, you'll be able to go in the front door and you'll be able to get to most everywhere else just by being in a hallway. And so we're really, really excited about that. We have a phenomenal partnership uh, with our police department. And, you know, I remember last year there was a situation that had nothing to do with the school, uh, but there was a, a concern, you know, just down the street from the school. Uh, at no time was the school ever in danger at, at all. Even if the police never showed up, there was no danger to the school. But when I tell you we had the Cardinal City Police Department here within about 45 seconds and that school had locked down just as a precautionary measure, it, it went like it, it, it should have. We learned a couple things through the process and made adjustments. And so we appreciate their support. Um, and so again, it's something though that, you know, we don't necessarily talk about, you can't share every safety plan because, you know, those things need to be internal as, as well, but it is something that we talk about a lot. Listen, I, I'm not gonna ask you, because I hear in Florida, they're gonna put uh, guns in all the classrooms. I won't ask you yeah, about that. No. Yeah, but you know, uh, Mark, I, that whole safety thing is just, uh, it's on everybody's mind because it keeps popping up. It, it, and it should be. And that's something that we live in a world today that we always gotta be focused on. And so, you know, and again, I go to our seven pillars. Uh, one of those pillars is safety and well-being. And that's the well-being of students, it's the safety of the students, but it's safety of our buildings too. We're holding ourselves accountable for that. It's something that we're always talking about and measuring ourselves to make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing. A lot of times when it comes to accountability, the, the example I always use actually falls in the world of safety. We stress accountability so much in the system because accountability is forward-facing. It's not backwards-facing. 
people, you know, they, they're, they're happy their child was safe yesterday. They're happy their child's safe today. But what they're most concerned about is, is my child safe tomorrow? And too many times in education, we're always talking about and we're reacting to things that happened yesterday instead of focusing on tomorrow. And that's why, again, I, we, we stress the word accountability so much. And what true accountability is, we're held to a higher degree in education. Not a higher degree, but we have more um, missions that we're trying to accomplish. Because feeding children in a timely manner with healthy and good nutritious food is just as important as, you know, test scores and helping kids grow and it's just as important as safety and all these things in between. That's why we really stress that accountability piece. Mark, you mentioned safety and wellness. I know you and I have had a lot of conversations about wellness of kid. It's not just the physical safety, it's the whole student. That's correct. And uh, just really appreciate you thinking because I know some of the stuff y'all are doing to say, hey, how can we help a kid be well? Mm -hmm. Because not everybody comes from the same background. Kids show up and you know, different families and all that kind of stuff. Listen, re real quick, uh, people ask, you and ask, I hear it all the time, did y'all buy that, that the old hospital? Yeah, so the old hospital, the, the corner that, that connects to our property is not, uh, so there's construction going on right now, major construction over there. Uh, it just happens to be going on at the same time we have major construction going on. Uh, we did not purchase that corner lot. That is, uh, you know, renovations and enhancements that they're doing to that building, and that's separate of the school. It's pretty funny how you get asked those things. Every day. Every, Every day. day. That's, that, is, uh, that is just uh, too funny. All right, we're going to take one last break, and I've got a great story to tell you because you got a compliment the other day, but I'll have to tell you about it. So we'll be, we'll be right back. IPW was founded in 2000 by Melissa Vaughn in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Melissa saw that the industry needed some accountability, not only for the customer, but also for the service provider. Uh, IPW, for the last 20 plus years, has been working with some of the giants in the industry. Uh, our belief is that our affordable care model can be both affordable clean, as well as affordable in value. Uh, we believe here at IPW that the service should not be reflective of the price. Uh, we believe that what we can offer is a, a value and a service that goes far beyond what just it says on the invoice. We feel strongly in our people, we feel strongly in our product, we feel strongly in our customers that they believe in what we're trying to do. Our goal is to make them look good. Hello, my name is Rob Santangelo. Here at IPW's Regional Sales Manager, what I'd like to do is create new partnerships. A partnership that would put together a service package that is comprehensive and beneficial to you by protecting your assets, your investment, your brand. I look forward to speaking with you in future opportunities. Thank you. Here at IPW, we are always looking for dependable, reliable people to join our staff. We are always hiring for crew members and crew leads. Our crew leads are the ones that would take over the shift and also drive the equipment. So if you're looking for an opportunity to grow in a place where you are valued, then come join us. You can go on IPWWatch.com and click the Careers tab and fill out your application and I'll be in touch with you very soon. Welcome to Spencer Aesthetics, located in the West End Commons Shopping Center at 650 Henderson Drive. Our fun and friendly staff deliver exceptional treatments, including an enticing range of facials, fillers, hair removal, skin tightening, body sculpting, hormone replacement, and sexual dysfunction treatments for both men and women. Whether you want to feel more desirable or to simply age gracefully, you deserve to feel beautiful from the inside out and we will be with you along the way. Hello Cartersville. If you hadn't been by lately, come on by and check us out. We've totally revamped the store. We've added a lot more large capacity washers for your big loads. We have 40 pounders, 60 pounders and 80 pounders for those huge loads. If you've got large bedding, come on by and see us. We've got the machine you need from a single person all the way up to a multi-family. If you're tired of doing laundry yourself, we offer a wash, dry and fold service where you can drop it off. A few hours later, come back, it's ready to wear. 
We're located at 406 North Tennessee Street. It's All American Coin Laundry. Come by and see us for all your laundry needs. Guys, David Franklin, back with Dr. Mark Furbach. Listen, I want to follow up on that whole wellness thing, okay? Because uh, I've seen the statistics that 73% of all middle and high school students are lonely. And I know the wellness thing, you're talking about connectivity. Talk to us a little bit about that. And coming out of COVID, it's increased dramatically. So what's Cartersville City doing about that? Yeah, well, before I answer that, I'll, I'll back up. And, and I, I do want to stress this. We, we live... Um, pre-COVID and now post-COVID in, in the most connected society we've ever lived in. Um, you know, our phones have done that, social media has done that. And so on one hand, uh, research will show you that it's the most connected we ever, what I stress to people is it's the potential of connectivity. Reality is that that connectivity, although we're very connected, we're probably the most disconnected we've ever been in society to. And it's creating these feelings of loneliness and isolation because you're connected to your phone, that's connected to a relationship that may not be real. Um, and research is showing that although we're saying we're connected, it's actually driving up this loneliness feeling. And so human beings need connected, you know, they need to feel connected to um, someone, to something. It's, it's just, it's part of who we are. And so four years ago, we rolled out Capturing Kids Hearts where, you know, the whole focus of Capturing Kids Hearts is on student connectedness. It's creating an environment uh, and a culture within your classroom, within your school building that creates connectedness, a connectedness um, to your other peers, a connectedness with your teachers that will then translate in going home too. And so, you know, I think about this month, you know, the focus is on empathy. And so in our schools, you know, we're talking about empathy, what that means. Uh, there's a flyer that goes home that the kids can talk, you know, at the dinner table. Hey, what is this? And for the first four years, our focus was just on building that culture and building these communication skills and these processes in our classrooms of how to engage our children and how do we create um, this environment of connectedness. Now we're beginning to branch out and um, go a little deeper with that and really focus on important attributes that help create that connectedness. And we've seen a difference. Um, they, last year at our primary school, we have our classrooms, they create social contracts. You and I could have created a social contract right now. And all that is is, hey, when we meet, what do we expect of one another? You know, uh, respect, empathy, um, encouragement, whatever it is. There's no right or wrong answer. We're going to create that, and we're going to hold each other accountable for that. Well, our classrooms have created social contracts. This is, as a family, as a classroom family, this is what we expect from one another. And when we're not doing it, I'm going to say, hey, uh, where what we agreed to at the yeah. beginning of the year. And last year, we were talking with our schools about, with the students, about what they love about their school. And we had primary age kids talking about social contracts. And it, was ba it baffled us for a minute. These are six, seven, eight-year-old kids. What is it? Why do you love a social contract? Because I got to help develop it, and I know what's expected of me and of my classmates. And it's just, I'm telling you, it's made a world of a difference um, to us, and I feel like it's helping our kids we strive to help make sure our kids know that they're, 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 they're safe, they're loved, they're welcome, and they're connected. There is a, there is a adult, there is a student they can go to when they need to. Mark, that is so huge. We've lost connectivity across the whole of uh, America, and it's, we've got families suffering from it. And, uh, you know, we've got to, in some respects, go learn how to do that kind of stuff there. That's right. Listen, we've we got to go, but uh, the other day, I was getting a medical test. I was talking to the person that was uh, doing it, and uh, their daughter was a student at Cartersville High School okay. when you were the principal. Okay. And this mother was bragging on you, saying, my daughter thought he was the best principal, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we talked about how proud we are that you're now the superintendent. And uh, so listen, man, thank you for I what you do. It. Thank and you. thank you for caring about kids and pushing to never be content, to always be moving forward and be better. Guys, practice that. You'll be better. Oh, and pray for Carsville City School System. Safety, these kids, administrators, teacher, we need to make sure that this is the most prayed for school system and county school system that we've got in America. So thank you and keep, keep it up, guys.